All right, um, you'll notice I'm dressed exactly the same way that I was when we did Paul's case, uh, only because it's 20 minutes later and I just figured the next lecture I wanted to do is a relatively short one, so I figured may as well just get it done, right? Now, the reason why this is a relatively short lecture, normally in this lecture, or at least on this day, right, this day, time doesn't mean anything, you'd be having a library tour. Uh, and what that means is a librarian, we, we would go to the library or a librarian would come to the classroom and you would be given a virtual tour of basically, you know, the ins and outs of how to use the library, etc. Well, obviously we can't do that. So instead, I've sent you a file. Okay, so along with this lecture, there will be an attachment. Okay, as, as is true with almost all the lectures and uh, there will be Basically, it'll be a, a, a presentation of how how to get through the library a system, um, all the resources that are available to you, a whole lot of stuff like that. All right. And so what you will need, by the way, and to tell you the truth, I don't know how this works because things work differently for me than they do for you. Um, so you'll need, obviously, a library account and you have to set that up. And I'm not quite sure how to do it anymore. Um, but again, the uh, the presentation will take you through probably all that stuff uh, as long as you, you obviously as long as you, you have a, a Carlton um, uh, student sorry student number and all of that you know you can set your account up and you should be good to go all right so anyway so like I said normally and that would take about an hour okay so there's an hour that, okay we're we're now an hour into the lecture if you know what I mean so now what I'm going to do in this lecture. I'm basically going to go through some finer points. We're getting closer and closer to your first essay, right? We haven't actually, we like, like you might have your outline done by now, okay? But we haven't actually written out an essay just yet. So let's do some finer points on essay writing. Nice and simple, all right? So what we'll do is we'll look at paragraphing, which is probably the most difficult thing to talk about only because there's no really hard, like, like, like there's no really set rules when it comes to paragraphing. There's general rules, but nothing specific. But I'll give you some ideas. Think about this, and, and this is important. Think about this for your essays, all right? This is another thing. You want to break the habit of the five paragraph model. It's so important. You have to break that. Because like I said, even though we're writing essays about literature, eventually you'll be writing essays about different things, 20 pages, 30 pages, what have you. The five paragraph model simply isn't going to work. All right, so what I'm gonna try and show you today is, ironically, I've kind of taught you paragraphing already. You may, not, you may not realize it because I never mentioned it, but go back to your outline structure and think about your outline structure. Let's just say you broke it down into three areas, right? <clears throat> so then you also have your intro and your conclusion. Okay, so, so that, would, that would be the equivalent maybe of five paragraphs, but, but, Go back and look at each individual section. Couldn't those be broken down into paragraphs as well? Like, like if you had, say, three or four points in a, in a certain paragraph, or, or sorry, in a certain section, or maybe just two, two points in a, in, a, in, a, in a section, and then two more and two more, boom. Maybe that's two paragraphs, not one. So that's what you want to start thinking about. How do we break material down? Okay, how do we make sense out of material? How do we keep a focus, okay? And that's the first thing we're gonna talk about. How do we keep a focus, right, when it comes to paragraphing? So this whole idea of the five paragraph model, like I said, you have to get rid of that. You have to get rid of that thinking, okay? And it might work for this course, it might, it might, but it won't, like I said, work for other courses, okay? So again, think about that, okay? All right, okay, so paragraphs, all right? Sorry, my, for some reason, I guess because I'm talking so much today, just give me a second. All right, so what is a paragraph? Well, this is the most general rule I could give you, right? Remember with the commas, I said I gave you specific things. I said, watch out for this, do it this way, etc. For a paragraph, it doesn't work the same way. I've sent you these notes, you can follow along, but they are general to begin with. I'll show you a couple of things in a moment when it comes to your actual papers, okay? You'll see what I mean. So don't skip this lecture. If you skip this lecture, you will not be able to document properly and you will lose marks, okay? All right, so a paragraph, it's a group of sentences, obviously, right? Now, now again, notice how vague that is, a group of sentences. How many? Well, it all depends, right? Every paragraph is different. Oh, and that's the other thing. 
in, in, in high school, I'm sorry, but again, some of you are just out of high school, you were shown, well, I must make three points per paragraph. Stop thinking that way. Paragraphing doesn't work that way. That's far too rigid, all right? Way too rigid, right? Each paragraph is gonna be different. So again, don't email me. Well, in high school, I was taught I don't care, right? <laughs> I keep saying that, I know, but, but I don't care because as I said, each paragraph is going to be different, right? And so, and, and we'll get a bit more specific by the time we get to the end of this, all right? And then in the last part of the lecture, we'll just have a bit of fun with some confusing words, words that I want you to be aware of, all right? Okay, so it's a group of, of sentences, right? Again, I didn't give you a number that focuses on one idea, all right? Okay, it's interesting, by the way, that very first sentence, okay, subject verb agreement. We'll talk more about that later on. Okay, you would almost think I should have written a paragraph is a group of sentences that focus on one idea. No, that's incorrect because the subject in the sentence okay, is group, not sentences. Well we'll, well, we'll talk more about that. When we get to your second paper, we'll get much more specific in, in terms of, you know, the real finer points of grammar and all that. Like we'll get way better at stuff like that too. For now, we're just worried about putting a paper together. Okay, okay. Now, remember, for MLA, okay, or no, sorry, for any essay, you should always indent, okay, five space. well, you should hit tab is the best way to put it. I've got five spaces there, right, but I've also got tab, right? So you should hit tab to show a new paragraph, which, which includes the very first paragraph in your essay. Now, let me just say something that might confuse you. It might, but it may not. If you were to look at OWL, they suggest that your first paragraph should not be indented, but, 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 they are suggesting for a PhD, a PhD thesis. So the first paragraph of a PhD thesis, okay, would be an abstract. And, in, and if you've ever read an abstract, you will notice they don't indent that. Go back and look at, okay, the MLA sample page that I've given you, why am I pointing at you now? I don't know, but go back and look at the sample page. And in the sample page, no, your first paragraph is indented. It is indented, all right? Because we're not talking about an abstract. We're not talking about a PhD thesis, all right? So here's your rule, just keep it in mind. Every paragraph is always indented to begin with. So what that means is you don't have a huge gap in between paragraphs, right? So let's fix that problem right now. If you do that, you will lose marks once again. So instead, no, you indent each time. Look at your sample page, okay? The, the sample page that I posted at CU Learn. And that's it, all right? And so basically, if you, like, if you go back and look at your outline, well then, you should have a focus, okay, for each point that you make. The chances are that could be a paragraph in and of itself. You keep your focus throughout. But at the same time, again, that's why I showed you the outline the way that I did. Well, you could have your subject heading, but then you could have three or four paragraphs below that, right? In other words, you can have sub-paragraphs, okay, as well. Maybe not sub-paragraphs, but you follow what I mean, right? You can have your main idea, but that main idea can still be broken down into other, like, like sub-ideas, right? So, and that's how paragraphing works. And that's how structure works, as I showed you in the lecture on outlines uh, earlier, okay? And so, now, here's where it gets kind of interesting. A paragraph should be, in general, I, I wanna be really careful with this. In general, a paragraph can be broken down into three different areas, three sections. But we don't need to be so rigid when it comes to that. I'm gonna show you what they are, but as you get better with your writing, and I'm sure some of you will be thinking, no, that, that, that's too, too rudimentary, right? Um, I'm simply trying to show you how the paragraph works. But for those of you who are really, really good at writing, you can, you can play around with what I'm about to talk about, okay? You'll see what I mean. All right, so let's just take a look at the organization of a paragraph, all right? So you've got the topic sentence. I, I, you've, you've heard this a thousand times before, right? You've got the topic sentence, then you have your body sentences, okay? And in notice in the notes that I provided with supporting evidence, I'm gonna elaborate on that in just a moment. And then you have a transitional sentence. Now let's hold off just for a second, okay? And let's write, if nothing else, make a note or highlight the phrase that I have bolded. 
a paragraph is a microcosm okay, of the entire essay. When we look at the paragraph that I'm going to show you in a second, you'll see exactly what I mean. So let's think about that just for a second. Again, if we were in class together, we, we, could, we could talk about that. We, we could have a bit of fun with that. Uh, I, would, I would ask you, okay, as, as this lecture began, I would ask you, how many sentences should go into a paragraph? And literally, some of you would actually give me a, a specific number that you were told in high school. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, right? Like, like there, there is no set number, okay? But some of you have been told that. So again, that's something you have to, you know, you have to break that habit. So let's go back to the sentence that I just read out. A paragraph is a microcosm of the entire essay. Microcosm. What does that mean? What does that word mean? Well, micro, small, right? Smaller, cosm, world. So a microcosm simply means a smaller representation of a larger thing. And I don't know if you need to write that down, but that's the idea. Okay, okay. So let's think about the essay just for a moment. Okay. How many major components are there in an essay? Well, there are three. There's the introduction, the body, the conclusion. Not notice how often I do that, right? Hmm? 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 Why? Because writing, the, the, the process of writing, it, everything works the same way. You simply have to make sense out of things and break it down. So, like, like section one, section two, section three, okay? And then, like, 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 things can be broken down that way. So let's go back. A paragraph is a microcosm of the entire essay. If you were to accept that premise, okay? We can save a lot of time today, okay? But, but many of you won't. If we were to accept that premise, I can show you so many different things, right? And it won't take very long. We have a topic sentence. We can play with that because not every paragraph is necessarily going to need a topic sentence. But every section will. Okay, okay, so should I say that again? If you have a short paper, you don't necessarily want a topic sentence and a transitional sentence in every paragraph. But if you want to improve your writing, well, then you do want a topic sentence and a transitional sentence. Where? In your sections. If you've been following along and watching the lectures, you know what I mean now by a section. So a section could be five pages. What word would you use to get into a new section? Okay? Or at least to close off a section? Because, although. Right, it all works. It all works the same way. So start, start working on those things in your writing. Remember, because of this, because X, comma, Y. And so in a, you know, in a strange way, your transitional sentence will lead you into your topic sentence of a new section. I'm getting a bit complicated, but, I, but if you're following along, that, that makes perfect sense. So what I'm saying is, don't get too hung up on this whole idea of topic sentences and transitional sentences for every paragraph, because then it just becomes obvious, right? Your writing just becomes obvious, all right? And, and like I said, and, and many of you have been taught to do that, so be careful, all right? You, you, I'm trying to find the right words. You can you can be you can be playful with your writing when it comes to sophistication. You don't have to be that rigid. But 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 we still want to follow the rule of the, the structure. You'll see what I mean when we get to an example in just a moment. Okay? So obviously the topic sentence right sets up the focus, states basically what the paragraph is going to be uh, all about, or the section is going to be all about, right? But there wouldn't Okay, I'm going to hold off on something. I've got something here in the notes. I'm going to hold off and show you something in just a moment. All right? And then the body sentences, obviously, well, that's where you have your evidence. Now, that you all know. You've been taught that, right? That's where you have your quotes and everything else. And then transition, so moving from one section to another. Now, it just may so happen that in, in the, the papers that you do for me, maybe you do have a transitional sentence, you know, at the end of each paragraph, only because the paper is so short. But try and think more about sections, moving through various sections when you're writing a 20 page paper. Okay. All right. And then finally, yeah. So uh, as we discussed, right, 
you have this whole idea then of the flow to the paper. You want to think about words that take the reader through, and that's where the transitions work very well. And so, what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you a paragraph. I'm not worried about the content. I, I, again, I keep saying that, right? I'm not worried about content necessarily when it comes to showing you examples. It's more about how do we put things together. So, let's just, I, I, I made up a, a paragraph or, 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 out of the blue, right? And it actually has nothing to do with literature. It has more to do with imperialism. But anyway. Okay. So follow along. Okay, I've sent you the notes, so follow along. Imperialism was a foreign policy used by the British for a number of different reasons. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? Earlier, I just said a paragraph is a microcosm of the entire essay. Well, there's my topic sentence. Imperialism was a foreign policy used by the British for a number of, a number of different reasons. It's kind of like a general opening statement. Remember when we talked about your introduction and then how, how the paper sets itself up? Kind of the same thing, right? That's what I mean by a microcosm. Now, also, notice, in the first sentence there, no quotes. If you felt the need to have a quote in your first sentence okay, of the paragraph, don't begin the paragraph with quotation marks. Move into okay, your quote with your own words. All with, that's much better style, much better style. So remember that, I'm gonna say it again. Don't begin, think about it. Should you have a quote in your introduction? No. Should you have quote, quotes in your conclusion? No. Well, if the paragraph is a microcosm of the entire essay, the same thing kind of works in that regard as well. So move, move into paragraphs with your own words, Finish paragraphs with your own words. Simple as that, right? Then all the quoting happens in between, just like the, the overall paper. So now, let me just show you a couple of things here. An imperialist nation acquired vast amounts of additional territory. Okay, okay that's all preamble there. Now, this is what I want to show you, and I want you to be very, very clear on this, all right? Imperialism also... See where I am now? I'm one, two, three, four, five, six lines down. Imperialism also, quote, notice what's not there. There's no comma. There's no colon. There's no semicolon. Again, some of you have been taught that before you have a quotation mark, you must have some kind of punctuation. That's not true. Not at all. Punctuation works exactly the way I showed you in lecture two when it came to the commas. Okay, I think it was lecture two, but anyway, right? Don't don't follow this whole idea that you must have punctuation before every quotation mark. No, no, no. Instead, in this example, okay, because I'm going to show you a different, I'm going to show you something else where yes, sometimes you do need it. Imperialism also quote brought, okay brought with it a great deal of glory and prestige for the British Empire and beyond. End of quote. Okay, so let's look at three things here, at least three. I don't have punctuation. I just move into the quote. Then at the end of the quote, I have quotation mark. Then I have a space. Then I have the author's name. And then I have page number. Then, and in, parent, in parenthetical notes, right, parentheses, then I have the period. That's how you do it. Okay? So I'm not asking for much when it comes to documentation for the first paper, but that's how you do it. That period goes after the parenthetical note because the parenthetical note is part of the sentence. Okay? Okay. Now let's just say, and this might be a bit confusing, I'm simply trying to show you, right, that there's two different ways that we could have punctuation before the quotation mark or not. In this example, we don't. But let's just say instead, I wrote, okay, according, let's just say, I wrote according to Wordsworth, and then I had my, my quotation starting with the word imperialism. According to Wordsworth, imperialism also brought, well, in that case, then I do need a comma, only because According to Wordsworth, 
Well, that goes back to that introductory word or phrase that we were talking about. So again, it has nothing to do with the quote. It has to do with the way I set up the sentence. So according to Wordsworth, comma, and then quote, imperialism, right? See what I mean? And so when it comes to punctuation, don't think about the quotation mark. Just think about how you've set up the sentence. That's all. Okay, simple as that. It would be better, by the way, if you if you had actually written something like, according to Wordsworth, comma, imperialism also, and then quote, brought, and then move from there. It's just better style. That's all. It's not wrong or right. It's just better style. But but remember, sometimes you will need punctuation before a quotation mark. Sometimes you won't. Right. So try and get that out of your head as well. Okay. And then just notice the way that I end off this uh, this paragraph. And you can tell now I'm moving into a new section. Although some countries benefited from this type of foreign policy. So obviously I was talking about the benefits earlier on, right? This would be a much larger paper, by the way, right? There are far more many that suffered. So now I'm going to start moving into the countries that suffered. That's it. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. Just give me one second here. Yeah, tea was getting cold, so anyway. All right, so here's how, how we can we can cite, okay? We MLA citation style, different ways that we can do it nowadays, right? Used to be, it used to be there was only one way to do these things. You would you would give your quotes, and then you would have the page, uh, uh, the author at the end, and the page number. But there's different ways we can do it now. Oh, let me go back to one other thing. Notice where I have words worth 54. In MLA style, we do not have a little P there, okay? You know how sometimes we have the P period and then 54? No. So we simply have the author's last name, space, the page number that we took it from, and we'll talk more about work cited and all that, okay, later on. And so uh, the author's name, the page that we took it from, and then the closed parenthetical note, period. That's how you do MLA, okay? Okay, so... Are there different ways that we could do this? Yeah. As a matter of fact, MLA is kind of borrowing a bit now from APA. So those of you who know APA, uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean. So let's take a look at one example. Wordsworth stated that romantic poetry was marked by, okay, a, quote, spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. Okay, end of quote, 263. Now, why can I just put 263? Because I made it clear, okay, that I'm, I'm quoting from Wordsworth. So when I look at my work, work cited, again, that we haven't done just yet, but we'll get to it. When I look at my work cited at the end, there'll be an, a citation that begins with Wordsworth. And I'll know, okay, so it's from that work, and I can find that quote on page 263. So you're now allowed to do that in APA. I think that came in about two years ago, all right? Um, and so then you could also, uh, oh, oh, a different way then, Romantic poetry is characterized by the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. Now, notice in that case, I didn't mention the author. So then I would have to include Wordsworth, right? So Wordsworth 263. So when you're writing your essays, right, uh, sometimes if, if you make it clear that the, you know, who, who the author is, like who's doing the speaking, so you can do it the first way. And then if you don't, then just do it the second way. I would argue that for the purposes of our essays, you'll probably do number two, okay, the words were like the author and then the page reference, because I don't know if you really want to be referencing the author, okay? Rarely do you want to be doing that, okay? So instead, you probably, you'll probably be using the same style in the second example that we have in the actual paragraph early on, right? Words worth 54 or whatever, okay? Again, though, like one or two exceptions, maybe, but I would argue most of the time you'll actually have the author and the number, the page number, but no little p, right? And that's it. And so both citations then, right, uh, tell readers the information in the sentence can be located on page 263 of a work by an author named Wordsworth. I, I'm, you all know that, okay? So I keep referencing this notion of a work cited. Don't worry too much about that. We'll get to it. And it's very similar to a bibliography. No big deal. As a matter of fact, I might have even talked about it. It's strange the way I'm doing lectures. And, and it's, it's kind of like, uh, again, I keep saying this, but time doesn't exist. So I may have already covered that. But if I haven't, don't worry. All right. And I, I also have a file for you on so you learn about the work cited. Okay. But we'll get to all of that. Okay? Or we already have. So there you go. 
And then, yeah, so, and then you would go to the end of the, the essay and you would find, you know, there's your information there, lyrical ballads, okay, 1967, whatever. I also, I'm not going to talk about this, but I also included APA just because for your other courses, that may come in handy. I don't want to talk about it here because we're not going to be doing that, right? But I, I just thought if in APA, they, that's where you actually have the little P and, and there's a whole lot of different ways that you can do it, all right? But we don't do that for MLA. Like I said, I just thought it included for your other courses. All right? Okay. I think that's about it for that. All right. So as I said, because I used the word although at the end of the paragraph that I had, we now see that I'm setting up a transitional sentence. So in your own writing, just start thinking about stuff like that, right? As I said, you won't do it every time, right? But after each section, it gets you into a new section right? And so, um, at a minimum, at a minimum for our essays, okay, I am speaking directly now about our course, you will have quotes. You will have quotes in your papers at a minimum. And the quotes will come from what we call the primary text. All that means is the short story. Okay, so whatever short story you're, 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 you're writing about, make sure you quote from it. That's a minimum. That's a minimum, right? And so, and I'm, I'm just quickly looking at, at the, uh, the notes here. Yeah, so you should have quotation marks in your paper followed by the source cited. Okay, so at a minimum, you will have, like, let's do the first one again, Cather, right? Two. That would, like, let's just say you quoted from page two, right? Or, like I have here, yeah, the fact that, quote, there must be more money, Lawrence 408. So, remember once again, if you were to get really technical, it's not actually Lawrence who is the editor of, you know, the, the source. Don't worry about that. So, go ahead and just put Lawrence. I mentioned that in the lecture on Paul's case, I think, right? Okay. And so, as I said, I don't think I need to mention much more about that. Okay. So, now. Paragraph size. I could go through the whole page of notes here. I'm just going to do this off the top of my head. All right. How long should a paragraph be? If you have a paragraph that is more than a page long, you have major problems with your writing. But let me show you why you might have paragraphs that are more than a page long. Because you were taught the five paragraph model, right? And you let's just let's just say not for our course. Let's just say though you write a seven-page paper. Well, if you're writing the five-paragraph model, your paragraphs are gonna they'll have to be more than a page long, right? Okay. Think about this just for a moment. Let's just say it's late at night. It's a it's eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, whatever time you're used to going to bed, and you're in bed, and you're all cozy. And you're, you've got one more thing you have to do, right, for, for school, okay, before you fall asleep. And it's read the rest of the chapter of your psychology, sociology textbook, whatever. doesn't matter. But you're getting tired. You're really getting tired. Okay, so what do you do? You would do the same thing that almost everybody else would do. You've got, say, you've got about five pages left to read, but you're tired. I mean, you're really tired. You're sleepy, all right? Okay. So what would you do? You'd flip a few pages just to see, like, maybe there's a few photographs, or maybe there's, you know, a graph, or maybe, in other words, maybe I don't actually have to read as much as I think I do. Okay. But as you flip those pages, you notice, oh, my God, it's nothing but words. It's just words for the next five, six pages. What would you do? You would close your book and go to bed. I would. Okay. Let's say I'm reading your essay. And I'm getting tired. <laughs> Can you see where I'm going with this? Right? You do not want paragraphs that are like a page and a half long. You've got that's another you've got to break that habit. All right. So, again, off the top of my head, this is not a rule. Strong paragraphs, for the most part, 
should be a half a page double spaced. I know, I know, I just made that up off the top of my head. But a really good paragraph should be able to do what it needs to do in about a half, half a page, okay, double spaced. All right? If you find that you're moving towards, say, three quarters of a page, you're really pushing it. You're really pushing it. And chances are, once you get to that three quarter mark, you can probably break that paragraph up into two sections, two areas. Now, do I have the magical solution to when you would do that and how you would? No, I don't. But as you get better at writing, you'll see, you'll see that in fact, yeah, you can break material down. I keep saying that, right? I keep saying that over and over again. So you want to break material down, right? Make sense out of stuff. If you give the reader a page long paragraph, the reader can't remember everything that was in that paragraph. Well, it simply doesn't resonate. Look at your first paper that you hand in to me. If you have a page that is literally, that, that is one paragraph, like longer, uh, sorry, if you have a paragraph that takes up an entire page, you're not getting better than a C plus, I can guarantee you. Simply because you have no sense of structure. So you wanna start thinking about that. Okay. I shouldn't say you won't, you'll get a C plus, whatever. All I mean is you're not getting an A. I can guarantee you that, right? You have to start thinking about how to put material together. Okay. And so again, and I'm only saying that, like I said, because of longer papers, you'll have to write down the road, not for me, but for other courses. So start thinking about stuff like that. Okay. Can I break this paragraph up? Well, when do I begin a new paragraph? That's the next thing in, in the notes, right? Well, it, 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 it's a difficult question, isn't it? But obviously, for each, let's go back now to our outlines. For each new section, I obviously need a new paragraph. That's obvious, right? But if I do my outline correctly, and I have very clear points under each section heading, then maybe that's what tells me when I need new paragraphs. Right, do you see what I mean? You break the material down, it makes more sense, and then, and then it's just easier for the reader. That's the way paragraphing works, okay? So like I said, I wish I could give you a definitive answer. Uh, in my notes, I actually, I think I says here, suggests a minimum of five or six sentences or whatever. But again, I'm just like, like what I mean by that is, you obviously don't want a paragraph that is two sentences. That's something else I've noticed with some writers uh, recently. They've been taught almost like you want preamble uh, paragraphs to set up the paragraph. Don't do that either. All right. Like, like you have a two sentence, a uh, little, little preamble into the paragraph you're about to, to, to discuss. Don't do that. All right. Same thing with your introductions, by the way, don't have a preamble. I think I mentioned that, but don't have a preamble paragraph and then a, an introductory paragraph instead one paragraph for the intro. All right. Uh, we talked about that. All right. Okay. And so, like I said, then, um, yeah, yeah, if you follow, like I said, if you follow with the whole idea of sections and everything else, then these things should fall into place, okay? And uh, it, it, like I said, it's not a, a magical solution. It takes practice. Believe me, it takes practice. I mean, oh gosh, I was terrible at this kind of stuff. I was. It, it, takes, a, it takes a while. So remember, it goes back to planning, mapping out how I'm going to get through the material. That helps so much when it comes to all of the other things that we're talking about, okay? Anyway. All right. Hmm. Boy, that's cold. All right. Anyway, so we're going to close off today. Keep in mind what I said. Usually you'd be sitting watching the librarian give a lecture, but I sent you the file. Do make a note of that. All right. Go through it. Um, be aware of everything the, the library offers. And once this whole pandemic is over, make a point of finding out, you know, going into the library, who, who your librarian is. I think I mentioned, I might've mentioned that before. It's not like you, you have one librarian who just, you know, is at a desk and that person takes care of everyone. No, there, there are individuals who are specialists in, in certain fields. So make a note of that, all right? Okay, so I thought what we would do, uh, we're already 35 minutes into the lecture. Uh, I thought we would just, close off today, not close off, like we still have about 10 minutes to go. I just want to show you some words that um, for some reason, for some reason, students, first year students tend to get confused on certain words. All right. And so 
I, I've given you a list. There, there, there's so many more. I, what I, I used to have a list of about 40, I think, and I thought that's that's too many to remember. So what I did was I cut the list down just to give you the the, the, the most common. And so here they are. All right, and make a note of these. Some of them, some of them are obvious, and you'll think, ah, I don't have to worry about that. There's about two or three though you should be should be aware of. Okay, excuse me. So you have accept and accept. Obvious, right? Like no big deal. So accept means to receive or to agree, right? Uh, and then accept means okay, other than. Okay, and so everyone went to the game except other than Allison. All right. That's not uh, that. That's not really a big issue. Okay, I've, I've noticed that, that that that's not. I don't have to correct that as often as I used to. Affect and effect. That this is a confusing one. In, I, I'm good. I, I could give you the technical language which I have. Right, affect is a verb. Okay, meaning to have influence on. Think about it this way. Right. Think of the letter, the letter A. A affect. Okay, it's very soft. Affect. It's being done to. I was affected. Okay, so I think I, there I was affected by the time change. The time change, right? On the other hand, effect. Well, that means I'm doing the work, right? The effect of global warming. So affect means having done to. Effect means you're doing it. Okay, maybe that's not the best way of saying it, but what I mean is like effect, right? Notice the e is much stronger. So in that case, right, having you're doing the action. Affect, the action is being done to you. That's how you use those two. It, it rarely comes up in, in in literary essay writing, but but it can. So just be aware of it. All right. Yeah. One that is problematic is farther and further. So, again, let's try and be general. Farther, distance, right? That ball was hit farther than any other I've ever seen. Farther, distance. Further means degree, degree. So if we're having an argument, and then the argument gets even more heated. We just furthered the argument, furthered the degree of the argument. So farther distance, further degree. That's the difference between those two words. OK, again, the reason why I'm telling you that is spell check won't catch stuff like that. Right. It simply won't. And grammar, grammar checks, by the way, are not very good at all. I've noticed that. Like, I, I've got a grammar check on my computer. It's wrong, like, quite often, quite often, right? I know you're sitting there thinking, well, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm not. <laughs> anyway, so watch out for farther and further, okay? And then good and well, uh, 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 again, this is, this is being a bit of a stickler, but good is an adjective, right? So it describes. So Pat is a good dancer, right? Right? What type of dancer is Pat? He's a good dancer. So it describes. Okay. Whereas well, well is uh, is all almost always an adverb. Right? How do they dance? Okay. They dance well together. Okay. So anyway, real subtle difference there. To tell you the truth, I don't even know if most people would catch anything like that on an essay. I really don't. There are some who would. Not. I don't think too many. Okay. But here's one now. The the, the last three. I'm telling you, for some reason, I, I see this over and over again. To imply or to infer. To imply something, I'm doing the talking. Let's just pretend now, like like, like it, it, it's me who we're centering this word around, okay? Because I'm the center of everything. <laughs> Joking, anyway. But if I'm doing the talking, then I'm implying stuff. But if I'm sitting there listening to you as you talk, I'm inferring. I'm making sense out of it. So, so if you're talking now, you're implying to me, and I'm inferring. I'm making sense out of it. That's what infer means, okay? To interpret, okay? In my notes, I have to conclude, but but but, but it also means just to interpret. All right, okay. Now, 
This one, oh man, spell check won't catch this. And if you're making mistakes, like honestly, like, like, like we're almost done with the lecture for today. All right? I figured it would take maybe around 40 minutes, well, we, maybe one or two more minutes. If you're looking to get an A in this course, you can't make mistakes like this. If you write an A paper, I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding. If you write an A paper, but you make this mistake, I can't give you an A. It's an English course. I mean, it's also about writing essays, right? But it's an English course. So you must learn the difference between lose and loose, right? I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Lose means to either mislay, right? Like, 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 um, I'm trying, to th I'm trying to think of how you would use that in a sentence, but but lose simply means yes that 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 don't lose your gloves, okay? When you go to the game, right? So don't mislay. Loose, on the other hand, with with two O's, that means not tight, right? Unrestrained, like your shoelaces are loose. They're not loose. Well, you could lose your shoelaces, couldn't you? But but you follow what I mean? Your, your shoelaces, if they're untied, it means they're loose. Whereas lose means to mislay. Okay? So lose is, is connected to lost. Okay? Roughly. Loose, on the other hand, yes. Not tight. Unrestrained. Okay? And so, yes. And then, oh, and then finally, the sec, no, second last one. I don't know why I don't have a space there. Then and then, number one. That's the number one problem when it comes to confusing words. Okay, I almost lost that one there. But anyway, um, then with an A. Then with an A is used in comparisons. Okay, he, okay, or she is stronger than me. Okay or she is stronger than I am. The comparison. Then, with the E, time, 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 okay? So I will be there, okay? Or let me think off the top of my head. Um, can't even think of an example again, right? Uh, I will go then, meaning I will go down the road, time, okay? So then with an E, time. Then, comparison. The, the, I was almost about to say which one we use more often. It's pretty close, actually. That's why this one causes confusion. All right? So watch out for then and then. Okay? Then, used in comparisons. Then, time. And then finally, we're almost done for the day. Okay? Or at least for this lecture. I don't know why, but many people confuse woman and women. Woman with an A means one, one person, one, one female. Women means more than one. So think about it. Some of you are groaning right now thinking, my goodness, like, this is so obvious. I know that. All right. But let's just say one or two of you made that mistake. Well then, can I give you an A? No, I can't. So, and I, like I said, I know that sounds really feeble. It, it, it sounds so, like I'm being so picky. But like I said, part of the course is English and part of the course is writing essays. It, 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 like there's a, it, they're combined. So make a note of those things, okay? Just so that your writing improves, not just for this course, but any other course you take. I keep saying that, but that is part of what, what I wanna be showing you, right? Like, it's not like you want to take this course, learn how to write an English paper, and then that's it for the rest of your career if let, if you're not an English major, right? Although most of you are. I realize that, okay? So anyway, I hope those little things, right, will, will help you in your writing down the road. So 45 minutes in, uh, I didn't think it was going to take that long because, as I said, in the second half of, of, of this usual lecture, we would then have the library tour. And so I think that's probably good enough for the day, right? So make sure, as I said, Make sure that you, you understand the library file. Um, the, uh, I, I, I've asked the librarian to create a kind of generic file so that it doesn't necessarily deal with literature because of something that I've already shown you when we were looking at analyzing literature, right? In other words, I, I'm, I'm trying to show you 
How can you utilize the library for, for not only this course, but other disciplines as well? And so uh, if, you haven't, if you haven't watched the lecture on analyzing literature, you're going to be confused by what I just said there. But that's your job to go back then and watch it. You'll see what I mean as I start, sh as, as I talk about where do we find information, subject material to write on short stories. So go back and watch it if you haven't already. All right. Anyway. Okay. So um, that's good for this, this lecture and we will see you again. All right. Take care. Bye.